there are totally 18 topics in cardiology whether you go for usmle plab md entrance exam or finally mbbs exam <clears throat> these are the 18 topics which you need to be absolutely clear about so coronary artery disease is the first and most important thing congestive heart failure you go to any final year examination you have a essay question on congestive heart failure in the medicine paper you go to any entrance pgi aims all india or any exam you have questions on chf coronary artery disease valvular heart disease pericarditis pericardial effusion etc etc you need to be absolutely clear <coughs> So what's about coronary artery disease? You must know what is the differential diagnosis of chest pain. It's a very common clinician's uh, uh, differential diagnosis which you need to remember. Someone walked into the hospital with chest pain. So what is the cause of the chest pain? It can be caused to chondritis. What is the classical feature of the Chest pain, if it is due to costochondritis, doctor, sharp localized pain which is reproducible and exacerbated by exercise is the classical description. If it is a myocardial pain, which you typically call angina, how does it basically present? Some people say we have heaviness, doctor. We used to have one patient from Konasima, Andhra. He used to say, Doctor, I want to run and hold the coconut tree tightly. So, those episodes were coming. So, what is this? A very peculiar symptom. During one of the episodes where he feel like running and hugging the coconut tree, when ECG was done, there were the changes of unstable angina. So, there is a reason, Doctor. The clinical presentation of the chest pain of the Myocardial infarction can have a varied presentation. So, but generally, classically speaking, it radiates to the left arm, shoulder and to the jaw is what you have to ultimately remember. <coughs> if it is a pericarditis carcass pain, what is the classical feature? It radiates to the shoulder, it radiates to the neck or to the back and if the patient takes a Deep breathing or if he coughs, the pain will exacerbate and if the pain, if the patient sits and leans forward, then the pain get relieved is what you have to basically remember, which is classical of pericarditis. Why the pain of the pericarditis relieves on leaning forward? Further, first of all, you need to know why there is a pain in pericarditis. Pericardium is the bag around the heart. It has got a visceral and a parietal, two components. The parietal part of the pericardium is in close relationship with parietal part of pleura. So that is the reason the pain of the pericarditis, if you lean forward, typically the heart fa falls forward and touching of that inflamed pericardium will be lesser. So that is the reason pain relieves if the patient leans forward in case of uh, the pain of the pericarditis is what you have to basically remember. If it is aortic dissection, how do you like to describe the chest pain? Classical history will be given, clinical minute will be given in the entrance exam tomorrow. A 48 year old with the accelerated hypertension presents with the chest pain which is radiating into the interscapular area, radiating towards the back into the interscapular area. On clinical examination, it is being found that there are unequal pulses. From aorta only, the subclavian radial all will come now. So, there are unequal pulses, unequal BP in the right and left arms. What is your diagnosis? Classically, it is a case of aortic dissection. Once more, there are three types of aortic dissection which you need to know. According to the Debeke's classification, Debaki is one way of classifying the aortic aneurysm, uh, aortic aneurysmal rupture. 
they can be a rupture which is limited only to the ascending iota. It's called type 2. There can be a rupture which can extend all the way along the descending iota with or without involvement of the ascending iota. See, this is the ascending iota. Here it is involved. Descending iota is also involved. Then what type of debacky? It is called type 1. It doesn't involve ascending iota, only involves the descending iota, it is called type 2. So, this kind of pain which we say, interscapular area, radiation of the chest pain in aortic aneurysmal dissection, we said no. That will be there only in case of type 1 or type 3, but not type 2. Type 2 typically presents like a anterior chest wall pain, just like heart attack. So, there is a reason what is the closest to differential diagnosis for a anginal pain? It is the dissecting aortic aneurysm of the type 2, which typically involves only the ascending iota without involving descending iota, is the one which typically resembles angina and chest wall pain. The remaining things will all radiate into the interscapular area, is what you have to ultimately remember, doctor. <coughs> Now, if you take the chest radiograph, in a case of aortic uh, aneurysm, <coughs> what do you typically see in chest x-ray? Widening of mediastinum it is called as, when there is a dissection involving ascending iota, this is the place where ascending iota is seen. So, there is a widening of the anterior mediastinum, classical feature, and this is a typical CT which is showing the presence of uh, iota and that part which is dissecting and fo forming a false lumen is what you are able to typically come across. Now, what is the other differential diagnosis for the chest pain? When we talk of coronary artery disease is a very important question. A sharp localized pain which is pleuritic is the nature if it is a pain coming due to lung abscess. If it is a pulmonary embolism, will it lead to chest pain? If there is an embolus, what happens? There is an infarct of the lung, parenchyma. The overlying pleura get inflamed. So that is the reason there is a pleuritic type of a chest pain. If there is any pulmonary embolism, is what need to be remembered. But if there is a pulmonary embolism, what will happen? There is a hypoxia. Because Blood is coming into the pulmonary artery, but that got blocked, so it is unable to pick up the oxygen. So there is a hypoxia in the blood because the embolus, the blood is unable to reach the alveolar and receive the oxygen and get oxygenated. Hence, there is a hypoxia. Because of that, how what is the classical clinical presentation of pulmonary embolism patient? Significant tachypnea along with the pleuritic type of a chest pain is the classical feature in case of um, pulmonary embolism is what need to be basically remembered. How is pneumonia? Even pneumonic pain is also pleuritic in nature and it is frequently associated with hypoxia because of the lung involvement. If it is a gastroesophageal reflux disease, can it lead to chest pain? It is the most commonly confused chest pain for a heart attack. I still remember our own medicine professor who taught us angina. When he himself had MI, told his wife, ah, this is not MI, this is uh, uh, a simple, uh, in those days, jealousy is a big drug. Fantasy, it was uh, not that popular. So, he drank a little jealousy and slept and went to heaven the next day morning. Very excellent teacher he used to be. He taught us holding our hand and making us feel the murmur. That kind of a passionate teachers used to be there once upon a time and even today. So, doctor, gastroesophageal reflux, similarly peptic ulcer disease, biliary disease, herpes zoster, anything can lead to the development of the chest pain. So, there is a reason, doctor, as you keep, as you keep uh, uh, seeing the patients, more and more number of patients, you will start smelling the diagnosis of angina. That's the only way. 
So what is the cause of the angina? It is the underlying atherosclerosis, which is the underlying cause, is what need to be basically remembered. <coughs> so you have a, you please ask still is the eco coming or not is the eco reduced? Please uh, find out. Because Saurabh is reporting the, still the eco. Is it still there or eco got reduced? Please check. Now, slowly there is an accumulation of an etheroma. There is a deposition of the fat into the etheroma and ultimately the occlusion of the vessels. Now, what are the risk factors for the coronary artery disease, doctor? Some are modifiable, some are non-modifiable. Smoking, hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, physical inactivity, continuously sitting in reading room without playing is a risk factor. You pick up weight and ultimately you end up uh, uh, 